planning. Good evening and welcome to the January 6, 2016 meeting of the Murfreesboro Planning Commission. We have a quorum present, so I'll call the meeting to order. Tonight, uh, the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of October 7, 2015. Are there any additions or corrections to uh, those minutes? If not, I'll declare them approved as submitted. Uh, we have four public hearings scheduled for this evening, first of which is a rezoning application for approximately 1.68 acres located along Deal Lane to be rezoned from RS-15 to RM-12. Randy Friedson is the applicant. Mr. Blomley, good evening. Good evening, Chairman Lamb and members of the Planning Commission. Our first item today, as you mentioned, is a rezoning request located at the northwest corner of the intersection of Dill Lane and Harrell Court, which is just to the north of Mercury Boulevard. Harrell Court is a short private street that runs off of Dill Lane that uh, actually serves only three properties, the subject property and uh, the property across the street to the south and a piece of property to the west. Uh, but Dill Lane is the only uh, public street that this property has frontage on. This is in the block that is located north of Mercury Boulevard and south of East Main Street. The subject property is currently zoned RS-15, single-family residential, and is developed only with a, uh, a mobile home. Uh, the rest of it is undeveloped. The applicant has a contract on the property and wishes to rezone the property to RM-12, which is multifamily residential district with a maximum density of 12 dwelling units per acre. With the approximate acreage of 1.68 acres, uh, approximately 20 dwelling units could be developed on the subject property. Uh, possibly more could be developed if uh, certain uh, density bonuses were granted based upon amenities being provided. And of course, the number 20 also could fluctuate based upon what the survey accurate acreage is once the property is actually surveyed. This segment of Dill Lane from Main Street to Mercury Boulevard uh, has a variety of uh, zoning classifications and land uses. Um, all the way up to the north of this block, or at, on the north side of this block, um, at the intersection of Main and Dill, is property zoned CL, commercial local, that uh, we have a plan approved for an Ascend Federal Credit Union on that property. Uh, further to the south of the Ascend Federal Credit Union is property zoned RM16 where there is a small apartment complex. There are also several um, lots that are zoned RS-15 and developed with single family residences. Uh, directly to the north of the subject properties is a parcel that is zoned PCD, Planned Commercial District, which is developed with an automotive restoration business. That was zoned to uh, PCD about uh, 10 or 12 years ago. It's Mr. Stegall's property. Uh, to the west of the subject property along Arnett Street is zoned RM12, which is the same zoning classification that the applicant has requested. And it is, uh, there are several parcels zoned RM12 developed with single family and uh, multifamily uses. There's also property zoned um, uh, commercial highway directly to the rear of the subject property and it is developed with a automotive repair business. With that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Mr. Friedsome and his representative, Mr. Claude Roundtree from Huddleston Steel Engineering are both in the audience. The Planning Commission will need to conduct a public hearing on this request and then formulate a recommendation to the City Council. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Mr. Roundtree, do you have anything? Okay. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? What's the condition of Dill Lane as far as the street's concerned? I, I can say that it is, it is substandard. Mr. Uh, Huddleston may be able to elaborate a little bit more on the exact extent of the substandardness. Yeah, it's a two-lane uh, ditch section road. Ditch section, I, I guess, uh, Mr. Young would be a, a, a very generous term for the drainage system that, that may or may not be out there. Uh, it's, a, it's an old county road that originally came off of uh, East Main Street, Woodbury Pike. Uh, it's, it's certainly changed in its um, character in the last few years because of the uh, reconstruction of Woodbury Highway to Mercury Boulevard, John Bragg Highway, and then also just with the development in that area. Uh, particularly, we, we started looking at it with the ASEAN Credit Union Plan to the north, and then, um, and then as we discussed with the applicant, uh, this rezoning, uh, we discussed that condition. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's a road that... Um, that, that certainly needs uh, doesn't meet our city standards, and, and we would like to see some upgrades to it. 
As far as drainage goes, if uh, this request was granted at this level in the city council, they would have to come up with an appropriate drainage plan to uh, make sure they had on-site retention. That's correct, and it would have to meet the, the current city standards. Uh, the, the property generally wants to flow to the west uh, into that existing drainage system along Mercury Boulevard, uh, but they'd be responsible for managing their, their water before it gets there. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Sam, uh, is there any retained uh, monies that have been put in escrow to repair Deal Lane with over the years? We, we've not collected any um, any escrow or fees in lieu of construction on this stretch. We have on the stretch south of Mercury Boulevard, um, as, as uh, we look at that tractor supply and some of the other developments down through there, we have collected uh, a, a fair amount there. But, but this is really the first development, uh, this and the ASEAN Credit Union, first developments on, on this part of Dill Lane. We've had an opportunity to look at the road condition. What are you going to do when you got a sin, a sin credit at one end and this at the other that are brand new projects? What are you going to do in the middle? What we're going to do in the middle? Um, I don't know that we've got any immediate plans for that. Um, I, I think there's some properties that are positioned out there to be redeveloped. Um, and, and Matthew's already discussed with us the current zoning plan and current zoning in that area. I think we've got some properties that are, that are prime for redevelopment and it may be an opportunity for us to uh, to take a look at a at a, uh, a full block type improvement uh, along that stretch of street. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, before I open the public hearing, I'll briefly go over the rules we conduct our public hearings by. I'll open the public hearing and ask anybody to come forward to the microphone that I'd like to speak either for or against the proposal. When you come to the microphone, please state your name and give your address for the record, if you would. Keep your comments or questions to no more than three minutes. If you do have questions, the staff will make a note of your questions, and at the conclusion of the public hearing, we'll try to get those answered for you. All that being said, I'll open the public hearing on this matter at this time and ask anybody to come forward that I'd like to speak. My name is Bill Harrell, and I'm a lifelong resident of uh, Murfreesboro and have been involved in uh, the Deal Lane area as a resident for over 30 years. So I have seen a lot of changes uh, come about. I've been a part of some of the changes that have come about, and my property is uh, directly west behind the property uh, in question for rezoning and also on the property south of the uh, uh, proposed property uh, that uh, uh, goes between Harrell Court and uh, Mercury Boulevard. And uh, I, I know the Jones family and I appreciate the, the interest they have in uh, their uh, financial gain on this property and, and uh, wanting to sell it, and I'm aware of that. Uh, also, in the changes that have that I've been involved in, and uh, Mr. Stegall, who has also been a resident of this area for uh, all his life, uh, we've been interested in uh, how what we have done has affected neighbors and sensitive to their interests, because uh, many before a lot of Deal Lane became uh, rental property. Uh, I knew all of the owners on Arnett, which used to come around and and tie into uh, Deal Lane before the uh, new Woodbury Highway Mercury Boulevard was it was uh, uh, changed. I have a couple of concerns, and my biggest concern is the traffic situation because on the other side of uh, Dill Lane, where TSC to the south, where TSC and quite a few department apartment developments uh, have taken place recently. There's an increase in the traffic flow. Uh, Dill Lane on the other side is used as a cut through to go through uh, from um, that side of Dill Lane to Main Street and uh, back and forth. So there's been a, quite a bit of increase in traffic there. So I'm concerned about whether this project would cause uh, congestion and uh, a lot more traffic uh, interference there. So 
Uh, I don't know how many units are proposed in this particular um, project, 20. but I know the, le the rest of the uh, properties along Deal Lane, none of them are zoned less than RM15, I believe, and so this is a reduction in the, the uh, uh, si amount of land per unit, I believe, so uh, that, that is of additional concern, and I wonder, I think this is proposed as a uh, condominium to be sold to individual uh, owners and uh, with the type of uh, residency we have on Deal Lane then, I, I wonder if that's realistic that that will actually happen or it will turn into rental, rental property. I, I just can't see with the dynamics of the rest of Deal Lane and being familiar with the situation how uh, this could be attractive as uh, to individual homeowners to to move to this location. I'm also, since I front the, since it one side of the property uh, adjoins my street, Access Street, then I'm also concerned about uh, the potential security with any uh, down the road changes in, in what the uh, resident situation might be with this property. So. Uh, those are the uh, things that I have an interest in. Um, I know that uh, change is inevitable and uh, we're not going to stop growth in Murfreesboro, but even though this is rental property, it's a quiet area. We've tried to be uh, considerate of, of people that live around us and we have not caused any uh, um, impact in the traffic flow problems either myself or Mr. Stigall. So we, we, while we know there will be change and, and we know that will de be developed, then uh, I wonder if uh, another, the highest and best use for this property might be something more along the industrial uh, type zoning that would uh, not uh, cause an increase in traffic flow and congestion problems. So. I thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrell. Good to see you. Mr. Harrell, did, did you give us your address, sir? 2115 Harrell Court. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Nobody? Yeah, Clyde, you better come up here. They're paying you by the word. Mr. Roundtree, why don't you let me close the public hearing and then you can come on up, okay? Nobody else is coming forward. I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Roundtree, the representative of the applicant, has a few words and probably wants to answer some of Mr. Uh, Harrell's questions. Chairman Lamb, fellow commissioners, um, my name is Clyde Roundtree with Huddleston Steel Engineering. Mr. Harrell, first off, thank you for your comments. And as far as uh, my client's concern, there's several things that he wants to make sure of and one is that there's a buffer that's been provided and we know there's going to be quite a substantial buffer along the property line that's been referred to going to your property behind and that's going to be a type c that we talked with staff and then the rest of the buffers around the property will be type a buffers um, my client's also committed to putting up a privacy fence around the property to make sure that his 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 investments protected as well so as far as encroachment as far as migration from from his project into your project, we're, we're going to make sure there's some safeguards to protect you from that. And also, as, as he said, um, you know, we feel like by changing the density on this particular site is probably conducive. It's, it's definitely not a single family resident type of site in the future. Um, whether it's industrial, you know, that's another story. But I think right now, Mr. Frierson's committed to making it more of a multifamily kind of component. He would like it to be individually owned, you know, townhomes. Um, and as far as the development's concerned, it's not a large development. Probably we're looking at about 18 units. So, you know, we can talk about 18 to 32 cars possibly in and out every day. So I'm not really that concerned about it being congestion oriented just because it is single family. And uh, it's multifamily, but it's going to be a privately owned units at this point. So, um, with all due respect, I feel like we've got a decent strategy for doing an infill project in an area that kind of uses 
more of a lower price point kind of home situation. And um, I think we're sensitive to our borders, knowing that both sides are commercial properties, so the buffer is going to be there really to protect our clients' interests as much as to protect the, their ownership. Uh, we'll be sensitive to the amount of, uh, you know, the road improvements. That's something we'll have to work through with staff. We know directly in front of our property we'll have to deal with the drainage, have to deal with curbing and those kind of things. And, um, and knowing the full well, uh, that the buffers are going to be intact so we can have a nice development in this area. I feel like we can address Mr. Harrell's concerns and make sure that they're alleviated. If you have any questions, okay. please feel free. Any questions from Mr. Roundtree? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Discussion by the Planning Commission. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Blomway, so Harold Court was is a private road, is that That's correct? That's correct. And there right now this development is looking at just this one property, not any because this backs up to RM12 property that, that is not currently developed as RM12? Or? No, it's, it, you, you are correct. It is directly adjacent to RM12 zoning to the, to the west along Arnett Street, and RM12 zoning is what Mr. Friedsom is requesting. Uh, the RM12 zoning along Arnett Street is there are some um, single-family homes that occupy those as well as some you know, small, I believe, converted um, multifamily uh, uses there as well, that, that houses converted to, to multiple units. Okay, so we are just talking about a single uh, development here on this property and there'd be no ingress, egress through the rear or to the west over to Arnett. That's correct. The only, um, the only access that uh, this development would have would be off of uh, Dill Lane uh, and Harrell Court being a private street, the only way that the uh, site could get access onto Harrell Court would be if uh, Mr. Harrell, who, who owns Harrell Court, granted that access easement to the development. Okay. Thank you. To follow up Kathy's question, so is the Mr. Harrell's property that's south of this, it's across yes. from Harrell Court, is, what is it zoned again? Mr. Halliburton, um, Mr. Harrell owns two properties, as, as he mentioned, directly to the west of the subject property. I mentioned the RM12, but just south of the RM12, kind of almost covered by that, uh, the box with the word area, is uh, Mr. Harrell's par parcel that is zoned commercial highway. And then directly to the south of the subject property across Harrell Court, uh, Mr. Harrell also owns, and it is zoned RS15. Okay. Which are both probably. Okay, any other questions? It's kind of a mixed use area with RM12 and commercial and mm -hmm. residential all kind of jumbled up in there. Yeah. There's no other questions. We're ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion for approval for the rezoning application. Second. Motion is made to recommend approval and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. The motion carries. The second public hearing is a rezoning application for approximately 8.56 acres located along Franklin Road to be rezoned from RS15 to Commercial Fringe. Anthony Togray is the applicant. Mr. Plumley. Thank you, Chairman Lamb. Subject property is the property in orange on the map in front of you. Pull that map up. Thank you. Um, subject property is 8.56 acres located at the southwest corner of the intersection of Franklin Road and Rucker Lane. It is a portion of the former uh, Hudson property. Actually, I guess this is the remainder of the Hudson property. Um, it was annexed in 2003 when um, the Kingdom Ridge tract was annexed to the west of the subject property. When it was annexed in 2003, it was given a zoning classification of RS-15 as an interim zoning classification. Uh, just two years ago in 2013, the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, heard a request for a special use permit for a church from River Oaks Community Church on about half of the, uh, the Hudson property. And you'll see the River Oaks Community Church building will be located to the south of the orange portion and their detention area is here to the west 
and they'll have access back to Franklin Road as well. Um, River Oaks Community Church is in the, uh, has had a site plan approved by the um, Planning Commission and will be moving forward with construction on phase one of their facility. The 8.56 acres that remains is the subject of this rezoning request. It is still currently zoned interim RS-15, which is the zoning classification that it received back in 2003 when it was annexed into the city. The applicant has requested a zoning classification of CF, commercial fringe, um, for the property to be rezoned from RS-15 to CF. He is an orthodontist by trade and has indicated that he would like to construct a dentist's office on a portion of the property, and the CF zone would allow this use by right. Uh, he does not know at this time how he would like to develop the balance of the property, uh, but feels that CF would be um, a zoning district that will accommodate uh, future commercial development uh, possibilities on the property. Directly to the uh, south and west of the subject property, as I mentioned, is the River Oaks Community Church property, which is zoned RS-15. Further to the south and the west are areas located in the unincorporated county that are uh, developed with uh, duplexes along Franklin Road and then single-family residential subdivisions, uh, the Green Meadows and Brownview Acres subdivisions. Directly to the north of the subject property is across Franklin Road is area that is zoned RS-15 but is uh, predominantly undeveloped. Directly to the west of the, or excuse me, the east of the subject property is area zone PUD, planned unit district, and it is developed with the Market at Victory Village Shopping Center, which is anchored by a Publix grocery store. The future land use map contained in the general development plan for the Blackman community <coughs> recommends that the property in question develop as low density residential which is intended to permit single-family residential neighborhoods with a density range of one to four dwelling units per acre with appropriate zoning districts of RS-10, RS-12, and RS-15. Therefore, the request is not consistent with the future land use map element of the plan. However, the plan also recommends nodal commercial development patterns centered on major street intersections. With respect to the intersection of Franklin Road and Rucker Lane, the future land use map recommends commercial uses at the northeast and southeast corners of the intersection, but not at the northwest and southwest corners. The plan describes the commercial designation as general retail, restaurants and personal services for local residents with appropriate zoning districts of CL, CH, and CF. It is the applicant's contention that low density residential uses are no longer appropriate for this property, with the property being at the intersection of Franklin Road and Rucker Lane, and with it being cut off from adjacent single family uses by the church property, he feels that it has very little utility for single family residential development and is more appropriate for commercial development. The Planning Commission will need to conduct a public hearing on this matter, after which it will need to formulate a recommendation, recommendation to the City Council. Uh, Mr. Matt Taylor is here uh, representing the uh, applicant, and I don't know if he has anything, uh, a presentation to add, but I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after he has a presentation. Good evening, uh, Chairman Lamb, members of the Planning Commission. I do not have a formal presentation about myself or Mr. Harney or the applicant, Mr. Toger. I are here to answer any questions you may have about our request. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Any questions for Mr. Blomley or uh, the applicant? Mr. Chairman, I, I just don't see how people would build their dream home on this corner. I, I just think the uh, the RS-15 is inappropriate for this. And I know where the RS-15 comes from, and I'm fully aware of the Blackman Land Use Study. But we've got to be realistic in this. And uh, we have some commercial fringe, which is the least obtrusive to the existing neighborhoods in that area. So I, I, I just think that the existing zoning is not appropriate at all, and that... Uh, we need to look at another zone. Okay. Well, let's uh, conduct the public hearing and then we'll discuss it further. Any other questions before I open the public <coughs> hearing? I'll open the public hearing and ask anybody to come forward that'd like to speak. One at a time. <laughs> Don't rush. 
Seeing no one come forward, I'll close the public hearing. Now, Mr. Young. I just, um, I'm not going to repeat that. I, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> what you say? Huh. I, I agree with you on one thing about the uh, Blackman land use study and all the land use studies. I remember uh, us talking when we put them into place that they weren't strictly set in stone as far as the lines between the recommended uses that we would actually be looking at bulges from one use over into another as you know this is done like the land use study was done 12 years Beth, ago was on that i was on that 15, I remember a long time it was ago long, it was more than 15 years ago i think but back when you were in high school yeah and uh it was uh um, but we we it is somewhat flexible even though this is not by letter of the the study itself is not recommended for that i think it's not a unreasonable request to see this uh, change from RS-15 to commercial fringe. Well, I think the fact that the, the, the study, the Blackman study, and, and all of them have the discussion about having little nodal you know, yeah. spots here and there for the interim or for, for additional zoning. You've got the public shopping center right across Rucker Lane mm -hmm. from it. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, is uh, Rucker Road, is it supposed to be widened anytime soon? What do you mean by soon? <laughs> yeah, define soon. Does that mean yeah, 22 Mr. Young's years. Left or <laughs> <laughs> Chairman Lamb, I'd be glad to uh, to provide some information on that. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> the December meetings of the City Council that considered the uh, 2016 Capital Improvement Plan, and on the second year of that plan, there's uh, seven million dollars set aside for reconstruction of Rucker Lane. Um, you might remember as we looked at the um, uh, market at Victory Village, uh, the public's development, they improved their side of the street with sidewalk and curb and gutters as well as adding a turning lane. We're also anticipating that um, River, River Oaks Community Church will increase that uh, center turning lane along their frontage to allow a left turn in. Uh, this property does not have curb and gutter on it and so um, I think it's conversation that we'd like to have with the, with the developer and the, the engineer on whether it's appropriate to build that curb and gutter now or to escrow uh, funds with the city that we would use to, um, to reconstruct the curb and gutter along that side with Rucker Lane. Uh, but we are looking at, at year two in our capital improvements plan um, and, uh, and so that's a, a capital plan that the, that the city council's endorsed and I think the plans that we have, the engineering plans are at 100% and we'd like a couple of right away and easement issues to be able to move forward with uh, with that project. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Charleston. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, staff does not disagree with the comments made. We we totally agree that the best use for this property would not be residential and with the public's there and the church as a buffer between the other residential, it makes sense for a like commercial zoning mm -hmm. in this. <coughs> Any other questions before I call for a motion? I'll just say that I agree with Doug. It's not where you'd want to build your dream home, and uh, and certainly it it makes itself applicable to uh, uh, some type of a commercial use mm -hmm. with the traffic flow that goes up and down the street there in front of it. It, uh, it it's almost a common sense choice to to move that direction. So I'll go ahead and make the motion that we approve. I second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. <laughs> motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. We've recommended approval to the City Council. Uh, before I move on to the next two mandatory referrals on public hearings, I need to recognize three visitors we have in the lobby tonight, in the uh, Council Chambers tonight. Mr. Glenn Robb, Mr. Dan Charlie, and Mr. Michael Osborne, all here satisfying their leadership Rutherford requirements. So thank you for coming, gentlemen. I'm sure you will get all your fill of Planning Commission here tonight, so you won't have to come back anytime. So, But we appreciate you coming and participating in this, and thank you for uh, going through leadership Rutherford. It's quite a good program. Uh, we'll move on to the third public hearing then. It's a mandatory referral right-of-way abandonment for the abandonment of an existing alley south of West Burton Street. Matt Taylor is applicant. Mr. Plumley. Thank you, Chairman Lamb. Our third public hearing tonight, as you mentioned, is a, a right-of-way abandonment for an alley located south of West Burton Street and just uh, east of North Maple Street. Uh, it is on the site of the proposed Rutherford County Judicial Center. As a matter of fact, it is uh, located right where the proposed building is intended to be constructed. Um, 
this alley was it's of indeterminate origin, and uh, it essentially served as a backage road to the businesses that fronted on North Maple Street, and it, um, it uh, as I mentioned, it's. I believe Mr. Ives could not find a, a record of, of when it was actually recorded as public right-of-way. But nonetheless, it is, it is uh, there as public right-of-way. Um, city st planning staff has surveyed uh, other city departments and uh, various utilities, and it appears to be that there's no reason to keep it as public right-of-way and that it seems reasonable to abandon it and then quit claim it to the developer, which is Rutherford County government. and. Uh, um, if the uh, Planning Commission, after conducting a public hearing, wishes to recommend uh, approval of this to the City Council, um, staff would recommend that the applicant be responsible for, for providing the necessary documents uh, to the legal department for the drafting of the quick claim deed, and two, that the abandoned right-of-way should be shown on a subdivision plat to be incorporated into the overall uh, Rutherford County Judicial Center tract when the uh, parcels are assembled. With that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Matt Taylor is here uh, representing the, uh, the developer. Mr. Blumley, it does not extend. It stops there right where you show it on the map. It doesn't extend on further to the south to the rear of those other two lots. Yes, sir, that's correct. It only goes uh, uh, north to south on the northern half of that block. I wonder if that, at one time when Mr. Young was a little boy, there was houses on, <laughs> on those lots there, and they, a lot of those, like a lot of the, uh, streets we saw have alleyways back there behind them and I just wondered if that was probably abandoned back when the quick sack was built there and the other commercial entities. I remember the there. Union Cavalry coming through. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, I don't think we have any questions so we'll open the public hearing and ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Seeing no one come forward, I'll close the public hearing. What are the wishes of this? Move meeting? for approval. Say again. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. The Ch fourth Chairman. and final public hearing of the evening. Hold your applause. <laughs> Mandatory referral right of way for abandonment for the uh, for the abandonment of a portion of Williams Drive. Once again, Matt Taylor is the applicant. Mr. Taylor, you've been busy. Chairman Lamb, could I get a clarification on that last motion if that was subject to staff comments? Subject to staff comments, yes, sir. Everything we have is subject to staff comments. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. <laughs> okay, our fourth and final public hearing tonight is another right-of-way abandonment. Um, Williams Drive, which is located in the Gateway, in the uh, uh, Parkway Office Park slash Waterstone Office Park, um, which, has been, which was developed over the last... Uh, which has been developing over the course of the last uh, five or six years. Um, we recently saw a site plan on the proposed Waterstone Lot 5A, which is located here, where my cursor is. Um, and at that time, it was determined that there was a portion of the right-of-way at the uh, eastern terminus of Williams Drive that was no longer needed. Um, Williams Drive was intended to uh, intersect with another street that would head uh, southward from this tract. Um, that is no longer proposed to be the case. And this turnout here that is uh, in the orange color on the map in front of you is the, uh, was the proposed turnout for the extension of the road to the south. Um, city staff recommends that this uh, area colored in orange be abandoned as, as it is no longer needed and then quick claim back to the adjacent property owners. Um, we have conducted a study on uh, whether or not any, uh, there are any issues with the abandonment of this right-of-way. Um, some easements will need to be retained, and that should be made a uh, condition of approval if the Planning Commission uh, deems that appropriate. Um, after the public hearing, if the Planning Commission decides to approve this request, staff recommends as conditions of approval that the applicant provide a legal description for the area, a resubdivision plat, and field locate the utilities to properly locate the easement. Uh, in addition, um, uh, any easements will need to be uh, retained as noted in the attached study by staff. I'll be happy to answer any questions, and Mr. Taylor is here if you have any questions for him. Okay. Any questions? In that case, I'll open the public hearing. Anybody would like to speak? Seeing no one come forward, I'll close the public hearing. If there's no other questions or comments, we're ready for a motion. So 
Second. Motion is made and seconded. Subject to so, staff comments, yeah. of course. Uh, <laughs> all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed. The motion carries. That completes the uh, public hearing portion of our agenda. We move on to Mr. Whitaker's favorite portion, staff reports and other business. Uh, I have no other business. Mr. Blomley? Yes, sir. What say you? Mr. Huddleston? Mr. Huddleston? If I may, our uh, interim planning director will be officially become the planning director on Monday of next week, and I think uh, Mr. Whitaker's due our congratulations on that. He certainly is. We're breaking the news here first, ladies. You heard it first. You heard it first here at Channel 3. Yeah. Well, it's truly an honor to get to work with such a qualified staff, and uh, it's been a pleasure this last year and enjoyed every minute of it. What about the Planning Commission? Planning Commission, BZ, <laughs> and the Historic Zoning as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's I had to get all three of them in there. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Whitaker, you've done a marvelous job taking over since you've been in there, and, and uh, difficult transition you made it seamless so thank you for all your hard work and you've done a wonderful job since you've been in there absolutely thank, thank you. you for everything you've done and looking forward to several more years of working with you <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs> mr whitaker will now be bona fide <laughs> <laughs> counselor do you have any comments i have none okay. other than that one <laughs> if there's no further comments or business we stand adjourned